try this for now. Okay. All right. Welcome everybody officially to what I'm calling Tuesdays Live. And I was also thinking of calling it Trees Trust and Transformation. And you know, if you know me, you know I just love alliteration and I love trees and I love transformation and trust is a big core issue. And so what I was thinking about is that um I, I was thinking a lot about how it is that we can shift ourselves into like how do you shift out of an old constricted energy into something more expanded like what does it take to shift ourselves out of the old fears old negative thinking old stories and and that it's a big part of the work i think we all are really committed to doing and you can't really get around it honestly because as soon as you have a new vision or a bigger vision, you're going to hit some kind of resistance. And I don't know how many of you have read Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, but it's a great book. And he talks a lot about how all creative endeavor, all visionary endeavor, no matter what, will encounter resistance, period. That is just part of the nature of the um, experience. It's just part of the nature of how things are. So if that's true, then how do you manage that resistance, right? And many of you have probably watched my How to Get Out of the Goo webinar that's on my website. If you haven't, you can go to divorcebillman.com. It's a free teaching there. And it uses the metaphor of the caterpillar becoming the chrysalis turning to goo and then becoming the butterfly. And as I always say, no one likes to be in the goo. But you cannot become the butterfly without going through the goo. It is just not a possibility. So if that's true, if you're going to be visionary, if you're going to get a new vision and you are going to hit something negative that will come into your way or challenging or whatever it is. So the question is, what tools do you have to deal with it? How do you manage it? So one of the ways that we all do this is you look to your sources of inspiration what nourishes your soul what inspires you what lifts you up and transforms your thinking and so i am always encouraging people to actually be your authentic selves meaning what actually nourishes you so uh, most of you who follow me know i'm jewish and i love my Jewish teachings. I just find them so inspiring. Of course, I pick the ones I love, right? And when I teach them, I translate them into universal principles. And I listen to teachers in my Jewish world who are very expanded in their conscious and very wide-minded. And when I hear something that I go, whoa, oh my gosh, I love that so much. Then what do I do? I teach it to you. I share it. And that's what I want you to start doing. I want you, there's two kinds of things I want you, or maybe it's three, but there's a couple of things I want you to think about in your own work in the world. And, and a lot of it comes from this concept of trust. You know, I put trees, trust, and transformation. And I put the trees because the tree emails are this kind of channeled content, right? And so that's one of the things I want you to trust. Trusting is crucial to being able to bring your visionary content out in the world. And if you don't go through some kind of transformation, you're going to stay stuck in one way of thinking and being. It's, it's, it, you just stay in the groove you make unless you start to read and learn and think and practice and create a new groove, a new pathway. So how do we do that? And part of it is you trusting what comes to you in that higher guidance way, being around people, being around groups like uh, we are that support you in being visionary and trusting yourself. Um, and, then, and then being what inspires you, going towards the sources of wisdom that really resonate with your soul. So everybody has different sources of wisdom that resonate with their soul. So my, because I have a Jewish soul and my, it's my world, I, I did try to leave it and go to the guru world for a little while, but it just didn't fit and I came back. That's another story. I have a whole one woman show called Is God a Man in the Sky? 
based on uh, on kind of I know, I'll, I'll have to I'll tell that story some other time not not today's story. So I was listening to one of my favorite Jewish teachers. His name is Rabbi Shlomo Katz. He lives in Israel, and what's wonderful is he puts his deep spiritual Torah teachings on Facebook. And I really love bumping into deep spiritual wisdom on Facebook, where there's so many other things you could bump into. So I was listening to him teach last week's story. In our Jewish world, we, uh, in our Jewish community, we read the Bible, which we call the Torah, in order every year. And the entire Jewish community around the entire world all are reading the same section at the same time, over and over every year which I just love this. So he taught something that I want to give over to you. And I want to tell you what came to me when I kind of worked with it. In the very beginning of the story of Moses, and I really love, I once did a whole guided imagery on this story of Moses at the burning bush, because think about it. God says, Moses, I want you to go and take the Jewish people out of Egypt. And Moses is like, no, I am so not doing that. I, I don't, I stutter. I'm not the right person. Everyone says, he's like, I am not doing it. And I always say, if Moses, who became our greatest leader, thought he wasn't up to the task, well, that's, then that we should feel okay when we don't feel up to the task at first. But he does do it. So the first thing that happens when he's at the burning bush, and I had never studied this moment before, heard it. The first thing God says to him is, Moses, take the shoes off your feet. I'm like, what the heck? How is there going to be a teach a spiritual teaching on that? So what's so great is that Hebrew has root words. We have it in English too. So in Hebrew, it's shal na'alecha me'al raglecha. So shal is take off. Na'alecha is your shoe. Me'al from raglecha, your foot. Okay. So the word for shoe in Hebrew, na'al, also has the same root base as the word for a lock, like lin'ol, uh, it, to lock something up. And reglecha, your foot, has the same root as hergalim, regel, which are habits. And so the interpretation was you need to take the lock off your habits. You need to unlock your old habits. You need to unlock yourself from your old habits, your, your, the shoe of constriction is on your being and you need to take it off. And I had the image, so then I wanted to work with it. I did like my own imagery around it. Like what is, like, could I turn this into like a process, like a guided process? So I, so I kind of went in in my own sense and I had this image of like my feet energetically being stuck in these very like tight shoes that locked me to the ground. Like I couldn't move. That was the image I had. It was like, I was locked in place. And, you know, I think a lot of times that is sort of the feeling that we have at, at times when you have some kind of a vision calling you forward. Sometimes you have this feeling that, um, you're locked down and you can't move. So I, so, but the message from God in the story is take the shoes off your feet. So I, in my image, I couldn't take the shoes off my feet. So I took my feet out of the shoes. It was like this old energy that was locked in place. Like I it was energetically, I loosened it and I felt the image of taking my foot out of the shoe and placing it down. But when I went to place it down on the ground, it wasn't ground. It was a, it was like a light under my foot. And when I took my next foot out, it was like another light under my foot. And I had this image that every step I took created a path of light in front of me. And it went up. It was like creating a step of light moving up. And it felt like I allowed myself to become more elevated, to create a path of elevation. So it, it, it shifted my energy. Like I felt more like, okay, I'm lifting my, I'm stepping out of constriction. So I uh, so take that as a teaching for yourself in whatever way resonates for you. What is it 
what is the feeling? Can you feel that feeling in some area of your life where you are locked down and limiting yourself, that you're playing too small? You know, in the continuation of that story, if you read, if you go in the Bible and you read it, like Moses is like so determined that he is not going to do this job. He is not the right person for it. And it goes on for quite some time. And one of the things in the end that God says is, I'm going to send Aaron, your brother, to help you. You don't have to do it alone. Don't have to do it alone. And God, it's both. Uh, God says, I will be with you. And I'm sending your brother Aaron also. Because Moses says, I'm not good at speaking. And God says, fine, your brother Aaron will speak. I'll speak to you. You're going to speak to Aaron. Aaron will speak to Pharaoh. You get to be who you are. I always say, if Moses was scared in the beginning, we think we're not allowed to be. Moses didn't think he was up to the task that was being asked of him. He didn't think he could do it. And he became the greatest leader of the Jewish people. He grew into his leadership. And if you follow the story, in the beginning, it gets worse before it gets better. So you can't quit. You can't quit on your vision. You know, and there are some, there are a few of you in here, you know, who are who have been either in my year long in story group like Janice or Annabelle, who just jo joined it and Susie's in now, too. And part of the point of being in a group is we hold each other strong. You don't you can't lead with a new vision and go and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. You can't do that all by yourself. You know, now God, most of us don't have quite as big a mission as God gave to Moses. But nevertheless, whatever your vision is, it matters. It matters. We're so quick to tell, say to ourselves, what I say doesn't matter. I'm too small. You can notice which of these are yours, you know, like I've had to walk through over my years of working myself, a very big, I can't do it um, voice, whatever it was I was doing. No, I really can't. You know, I would argue. Have you ever had someone say, why are you arguing for your limitations? I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, <laughs> you know, I can't do it. I'm not organized enough. I, I'm not structured enough. I don't know how to do it. I'm not business like I'm not good at tech. I, 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 I don't I'm not good at writing. I'm not disciplined. I can't look. Like, I could go on and on. You know, I mean, I'm maybe you don't have as bad a litany of your I can't do it as I do. But um, you, you, the problem, the, the problem is if you let them lead you, you really won't do your soul calling. You won't. And you won't, and you'll feel bad about it. <laughs> and so you are obviously on this call with me because we are all together feeling this sense that something more is being asked of us. I know you wouldn't be here if you didn't feel that because that's my thing. If you didn't feel that, you would just roll your eyes at me and go talk to somebody else. So, um, so, I, so that's one thing. I want you to trust your wisdom. You have wisdom. Here I am telling you my Jewish wisdom. Most of you aren't even Jewish and you probably don't care really what the Bible stories say, but it's okay because I'm trying to say to you, there's a deep message that's universal that comes through my wisdom. And it's the same for you. You have deep universal messages that can be filtered through your story, your wisdom. You know, I'm all about story. So what did I just do? I told you a story, happens to be from the Bible, but I, one of my new clients, she's doing this amazing work, working with children's stories. She said one of her big stories was the little red hen when she was little. And then she had a whole thing with Goldilocks and with the three little pigs. You can take those classical stories just as powerfully as I just did with Moses and teach wisdom from them. But how, how do you know which to pick? It, but the one that moves you. The thing that moves you. If you spend all your time trying to do the, the somebody else's way or do it the right way, it's not going to move you forward to what's calling you now. We've all, been got, we've all gotten an A in doing it the right way, just saying, or somebody else's way. Um, uh, that's my guess. That's most of us. And so, you know, my whole thing is called the in-story way. And people say, Devorah, what's the in-story way? And I always say, finally doing it your way. 
when are you going to do it your way? Your wisdom, your inspiration. So here's the other thing. So that's one, you have wisdom. You have wisdom from your life experience, from your spiritual traditions, from your learning, from the stories that you have lived and grown up with. You have wisdom. Now, just because when you were little or some other time in your life, someone said to you, that's stupid. Don't do that. It won't work. You can't do it. That doesn't mean it's still true. It's just that old voice yells at us. So you've got to learn to silence it. And that's part of the work of shift. And in the overall work of the in-story way, and many of you have heard me teach this, there are three stages, shift, shape, and share. And they parallel freedom, flow, fulfillment. So you shift out of your old story, out of what's keeping you constricted, out of those old shoes that are too tight, too small and holding you down. Take those shoes off your feet. That's my metaphorical message for today is take those old shoes that are constricting you off your feet so you can walk on a path that is more elevated, more illuminated and more aligned with your soul. That's my wisdom that came to me that moved me. So why am I telling it to you? Because it moved me. And I believe if it moved me, it will move you. And that is what I want you to trust in yourself. So that's sort of the next thing. If it moves you, it will move your tribe. So I'm sure many of you have read my, you've all read my blessing from the trees or you wouldn't be on this call right now because I put the invitation to this in one of the blessings of the trees. And if your video is on it, if not, you can say in the trap, how many in the chat, how many of you felt moved by my um, emails on the blessings from the trees? Just write a yes in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, so now, those are frankly really weird, okay? If you're gonna think about it, I'm telling you I am receiving a blessing from the trees. The trees are speaking to me. No, they're not. They're not talking out loud. I'm not hearing trees talking to me. No, I am standing in a place in a moment, closing my eyes, feeling tuned in and receiving higher guidance. You can call that a million different things. You can call it so many things. The important thing is I want you to trust it. So when I, when I first started to do that, I honestly, this is the other honest thing. I loved it. Like I loved doing it. And then when I reread it, I went, oh, that's so beautiful. I personally loved what I received. And this is such an important thing for you to get. One of my, I have many soapbox rants. So here's one of them what moves you will move your tribe your the people you're meant to reach the reason that we're afraid to share it is because when we were young at some other point in our life we shared our true higher guidance and someone said it was bad or stupid or wrong or you shouldn't do it or went whap 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 in some way so in order to survive we shut it down the power of being in a group who is aligned with your way of thinking and your vision is because you can rebuild that inner voice, that inner structure. And you could, you know, ask someone like Susie who's on and she'll tell you that it, it makes such a difference to have other people hear your voice and value it. It rearranges your inner being so that you have more courage to share it out in the world. We are just like Moses couldn't do it alone. Neither can you. Do, you do not have to do your visionary work alone. It, it doesn't work, frankly, because you end up in the spin cycle. I don't know how many of you have um, ended up in the spin cycle, which is you're thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and trying and trying and trying and trying, and you just go round and round and round, but you're not actually going forward. Don't stay stuck there, seriously. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of reading the comments in the chat also. Um, oh, that was yours, uh, Eleanor. Yeah, no, of course, look, there's, there's another, uh, what, what she's bringing up is there is, 
there is a truth to, I, I, I'm joking about, it. there is a truth to tuning into nature. To, and people, there are people who really and truly do communicate with animals and hear what they say. There is a truth about really being present in nature. I, the reason I joke about it is because I also grew up in a world where people would say, Devara, you can't give a blessing from the news. What the heck are you doing? Like a very concrete, I grew up in that same concrete world. And so I had to walk myself through oh my gosh, can I send an email that I say is a blessing from the trees? But I have come far enough that I um, had to take my own medicine. And so I sent it out and, um, and I've kept sending it out because it, because I love, I love them. And because so many of you said to me, thank you. I love what you sent too. That's why I say, don't do it alone. It matters to me both two things. One that you gave me the feedback that was that that what I felt was true was true, and also it's meaningful to inspire other people. Why would you not want someone to be moved by what moves you? Why would you want to keep it all to yourself? Don't half of you sitting here now feel like you're supposed to have a bigger reach? You're supposed to move other people with what comes to you. Mm. So here I am doing this, right? <laughs> Um, so those are two, I want you to trust the wisdom that comes to you from where you trust wisdom to come from. Maybe you really, I want you to trust what you hear at the ocean from the animals in the trees. I want you to trust the wisdom comes to you. I, I, I had this whole thing about the difference between standing up on the top of the hill where I walk when it's all in the mist or when I can see a clear view. I want you to trust what comes to you. And honestly, if you have don't thought about joining the In Story Way group and you didn't do it yet, then, then go to my calendar, book a soul story session, even if you've had one before, and find the courage to join us. Do not sit alone in the spin cycle. It is not worth it. Be brave. I am a very big nudge. People in my group will tell you. <laughs> because I don't want us to quit on ourselves. So. That's the message for today. Get, take that shoe off of your foot and don't limit yourself. Say yes. One of the women I group, she's not on today. Um, she, Barbara, who's created a goddess journal, she has a theme called the dance of yes. And my interview series, the in-story show is coming up in March and many of the women in in-story are going to be featured speakers on it. And it, it is, and her, she said, should I do a second round? I said, we talked about it and said, yes, I'm into the dance of yes. How do you say yes? How do you move over in order to say yes? When the shoe is too tight on your foot of your being, you will always say no. I can't do it. I'm stuck. My, it's too tight. A lot of times people come to me and this, they're inside of, an, of a world that's too constricted. It used to be okay. It's like growing out of your shoe. It used to fit and now it doesn't anymore. So take that shoe off your foot and step into the light, okay? That's my message for you today. You will, um, you can always go to my website to see more. You can find my calendar link there. You can also go to soulstorysession.com. It's an old thing we created where you can still get onto my calendar. Um, you can just keep following me. I'm going to teach the, for a while. I'm going to teach every week on Tuesdays, but it won't do the same thing for you as joining a year group with a commitment to your vision to do whatever it takes. It is good to do this. And some of my clients like Annabelle and Susie are here now doing this, even though they're in my year group, because they are committed to their vision. So that is my big nudge for you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to end the recording officially then I always stay on about five minutes after for the people who are on the call live. So for everyone who is um, listening to the recording, take a breath, take, take heart, take charge, take action. Know you can do it. And as I always say in farewell for everything is remember to go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose and be a blessing. So we'll say goodbye.